Every month, an absolute ton of new mobile games hits the App Store and Google Play, and GameRanks always finds the best ones to try out. Hi folks, it's Falcon, today on GameRanks, the best free iOS and Android games of January 2019. Number 10 is Rangers of Oblivion. Now, this is an MMORPG that feels like somewhere between the Western type, Skyrim type, but has the sort of Eastern RPG feel hovering over a lot of the game itself. It's interesting because they actually have a lot of options, things to do that are aren't just go find monsters with friends and attack them. There's actually a lot of different modes, expeditions, there's speed hunts, there's various different competitive tasks one can do. But again, you can also do the whole find a monster and kill it with friends thing. It's a game that's got more personality than you'd expect it to, and it's actually pretty gorgeous for a phone. I particularly like that they actually made it as colorful as they possibly could. It's very pretty at times. And the character creator will have you messing about for hours, if that's your thing. That's out on both iOS and Android. Give it a shot. It's different, but also familiar. Number nine is Nano Golf Hole in One, a game that is deceptively simple. It's not like a massively complex golf simulator or anything like that. It's actually a very arcadey type game, if you ask me. Nano Golf is very much a mini golf oriented game, and it's a one finger play. Like, you swipe, let go. It's kind of momentum based gameplay in the same way Angry Birds back in the day was, except for it's golf. And truthfully, if you know how to play Angry Birds, you know how to play this game. And all of the courses are actually really well designed, a lot of fun. And I think you'll find that the graphics, but particularly the sound design, really make this a satisfying game to play. Just for whatever reason, it is just immensely satisfying, the sounds of this game to me. Number eight's a little game called King Crusher. It is a dynamic, swipe-based roguelike, and I know that that probably sounds interesting. What does that end up working like? It's actually not that foreign, it's pretty much like a roguelike, but with swiping. But I have to say that that is actually a really good way to do this type of game on a phone. Basically, you're a bunch of people who are tasked with helping the king become Become the only king by crushing all the other king. It's goofy, but it's fun as hell. It's got great, simple, but really well done graphics. And I think you'll find the gameplay is super balanced. It's really never seems unfair, but it does give you a nice challenge. I really enjoy this. It's got a lot of humor. It's got a lot of charm and I really enjoyed it. Number seven, Langrisser is a series of strategy RPGs that, well, we didn't really get a lot of them. We only ever got 1991's War Song which is the original Langrisser title. Just, we named it War Song here and put it on Sega Genesis. It is a strategy RPG. It's really gonna, if you play Fire Emblem at all, gonna feel very familiar. This version of Langrisser has various battles from literally five generations of games reimagined under this sort of new visual style. Most of them Americans have not seen. In truth, this is really a damn good strategy RPG. And all of the sort of gotcha, you know, the loot boxy type stuff, all that stuff isn't actually bad. I'm not gonna say it's good, but it's a free game and it's not super intrusive. Number six is Forged Fantasy, which is an action RPG that you build a team of heroes and go out and do action RPGing. It does have a story. It's not an amazing story, but it's not bad. I mean, it's not something that you're going to write home about, but I don't think that you are going to get upset about it either. I mean, it's fun, it's doable, and it's an enjoyable experience. The gameplay is actually very good. Graphics, colorful, enjoyable. And if you ever played Hero Hunters, I think you'll find that this is a good experience. I really enjoyed it. Outside of the story-based experience, there is also PvP battles and co-op boss raids and special events for you to play. Those tend to be pretty good as well. I think that this game is actually better than the sum of its parts because it does everything so well that even though some of the story elements are maybe not super original, they're charming and enjoyable nonetheless because the game itself is charming and enjoyable. Number five is Kaiju Rush, a cutesy city destroying game where you pick a kaiju, obviously a very large monster, and wreck the crap out of a city. Now that might sound vaguely simple, but that's the game. And if it's one of those things where you're like, I don't like simple games, I don't know what to tell you, it's really, really enjoyable. It has the look of perhaps a Pokemon game, except for the monsters are definitely not pocket-sized, and they definitely don't fight each other, they fight 
the buildings and structures of society. And it's wonderful. It's so fun. It's so intuitive. It's very simple to control. And in its simplicity, it is incredibly fun. I can't really imagine what else to tell you about this game other than you should play it. I'm not going to guarantee that every single person on the planet will love it, but I think a lot of people will. But, I mean, that's a good reason to try it, I think, personally. Kaiju Rush is out on iOS and Android now. Number four is Hangline Mountain Climber, a physics-based platformer in which you use a grappling hook to go up the side of a mountain. It is really an enjoyable experience. The grappling hook works very simply. You just tap, that's it. And the game is actually going to make you laugh a lot, I think. It's one of those games where dying is funny. It's just inherent in physics-based games like this. It's funny. And that certainly adds to the enjoyment, but I think without that, it'd still be a good game. I really enjoy the hell out of Hangline Mountain Climber, which is out try it you can get it on ios or android number three is hit the light a game that is entirely based around destroying neon light bulbs which might sound kind of needless but once you get going with it you know exactly why this is fun and it is so much fun you aim various marbles or steel balls i don't really know i don't really care around and the point is to use the physics to destroy as many light bulbs as possible and with some of these puzzles that can be difficult but it's also probably the most satisfying puzzle game I don't know it's it's really enjoyable like really really enjoyable the sound design is great the colors are great the destroying light bulbs and having like circuits go out it's particularly good there's frankly like a decent level of realism with how the lights behave and I think that that makes it more enjoyable but it's also something that's just absolutely absurd you would never have anything like this in real life and that's what's enjoyable about it it's wonderful. Try Hit the Light. It's on iOS and Android. Number two is The Last Cat, a runner platformer where you are a cat working to rescue your friends who have been captured and placed into hanging cages. Now, it's actually a pretty clever platforming game on top of being a runner because there is a lot of manipulation of environment that goes along with what you'll be doing in this game, and that's, I think, not standard. Among endless runners, I don't see enough of this kind of stuff. You actually have to worry about the environment as you are traversing through it, hitting switches, manipulating boulders that are falling, changing angles of lasers, like things that aren't just jump. And I really like that. I think it really works well. I would expect that you'll probably see all of the Endless Runner games start implementing mechanics like this game because it really takes the genre to another level and I'm very, very impressed with it. Good job, The Last Cat. Available to all on iOS and Android. And finally, number one is Tactical. This is different. It's a 5v5 shooter with a heavy emphasis on vehicles and heavy weapons, a destructible environment, and I mean, in some ways it's similar to an Overwatch type class-based hero shooter, but in other ways it's just nothing like that. I could explain some things that would make it sound literally exactly like Overwatch, but playing it, it's nothing like that. I mean, if you understand Overwatch, I think you'd probably understand this game, but don't be fooled and think that this is an Overwatch ripoff because it's nothing like Overwatch. It has a slightly different aiming scheme, but not in a way that's going to feel so alien that you can't do it. Like, I think if you've played other shooting games, you'll get this game, but I also think you'll have a unique time, and that's a plus in my opinion. Give it a shot. It's called Tag to Cool. It's out on both iOS and Android, and I had a blast with it. What were your favorite free mobile games this month? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you've been playing. And if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Rank.